Um, a third level, just really, I'll be really quickly, sorry. A third one is drash. And drash means search. And if this is the intended level, and this is the implied, then this, you could say, is the interpreted. And we love this on Pays. So at this level, one of the ways of understanding the Bible was not simply having one person telling you what it meant, but the Bible usually was given to a community. And the rabbis and other people would discuss and share what they thought. And Midrash would be written. And Midrash was, there's a number of things about Midrash, and I'm not going to go into all of them. But one of, the, one of the ways was that we would project into the story why we felt what was happening might have happened. So let me give you a quick example of three of these levels. Um, have, we got, have we got like 10 more minutes or are we running out of time? Okay, so if you go by, we'll just turn to 2 Kings 13 really quickly with me, please. I, I like this particular passage, so. This is the story of Jehoash. Jehoash is a king who, just so, so you know, is not one of the best, most godly kings Israel ever had. And this king is facing an awesome army. In fact, one commentator says that the army he was facing had wiped out more people in one day than Jehoash had in his entire army. So he knows he's in trouble, yeah? His face is out. He's not particularly godly, but he realises he's in trouble and he realises he's got to do something. So we pick up the story in verse... Um, let's go from verse 10, I think. Uh, da, 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 da. No, let's go from verse 14. Now Elisha was suffering... Elisha was the prophet, of course. Now Elisha was suffering from the illness from which he died. Joash, king of Israel, went down to see him and wept over him. My father, my father, he cried, the chariots and horsemen of Israel. Okay. What on earth is going on? Well, first of all, let's look at the first level. The first level is about context. And context helps us understand what's happening here. The king goes to the prophet and says, he's weird. Well, maybe you understand straight away, but I didn't. My, char- my father, my father, the chariots and, and his, uh, horsemen of Israel. What's he, what, what does that mean? What's he saying? Well, we have to understand that uh, what's well, about the Hebrews here, yeah? And they think, write, and talk, and visualize things differently from us. So if I, uh, if I, anybody got a pencil on them? Anybody got a pencil? Just really quickly. Just uh, so, sorry, to, I should have brought one, shouldn't I? Gail, thank you. Okay, it's not quite a pencil, but that's cool. Okay, so if I said, um, if I said, and I don't want to presume anything, but generally speaking, if I said to one of us from the West uh, to describe this, Oh, let's go for pencil. There you go. Describe this. You would probably say, well, it's yellow and it's got like a red rubber on the top and it's kind of longish and thin. Generally speaking, this is very simplistic. If I said to uh, somebody who's Jewish or Hebrew, certainly in these times, describe this, they would say, it's something you write with. So we describe decoratively generally. They would describe functionally. Does that make sense? Yeah. So when... Jehoash is going to the king, he's describing, sorry, when the king goes to the prophet, he's describing who he sees the prophet is. The prophet is the chariots and horsemen of Israel. In other words, the prophet is the king's only hope. He is the army. Is that making sense? Yeah. It's kind of straightforward, but it's context that helps us fully understand that, yeah? So he says, oh, the chariots and horsemen of Israel. And then it carries on after this. I'm just trying to give you just an example. Elisha said to him, Get a bow and some arrows, and he did so. Take the bow in your hands, he said to the king of Israel. When he had taken it, Elisha put his hands on the king's hands. Open the east window, he said, and he opened it. Shoot, Elisha said, and he shot. The Lord's arrow of victory, the arrow of victory over a ram. Elisha declared, you'll completely destroy the Arameans at Aphek. What is that about? Okay. Again, context helps us a little bit, and Henry Mez helps us. Context is this. In those days, one of the, um, it wasn't just for the Hebrews, but one of the ways you would deal with things is this. If Kevin's country or tribe lives upstream from me, and his tribe decides to put a, build a dam in the river that supplies them with water and me, me with water, suddenly I have an issue. So the, the tradition of the day was this. 
that I would go to uh, I would go to Kevin's tribe, and this may seem weird, but this is what would happen. I would go and say, "Hey, I've got a problem. You shouldn't have done that. We need to resolve this." And I'm gonna I'm gonna do something. Or what I did is I'd shoot an arrow, throw a spear into his territory, and it was a, a, a mark that said, uh, "You've got 30 days. We've got 30 days to resolve this, or I'm going to war against you." That's the context. So what he's hinting, I think, what he's hinting to Jehoash is this, is that, listen, you're not only defensive with God, you're on the offensive. That speaks to me. You know, when, when a man of God, or when God or Spirit comes into my life, he takes me, one of the signs, I think, is he takes me from the defensive to the offensive, you know? Yeah. And there's that sense here that he's trying to encourage and hint to him, you're, you're not going to be defeated, you're going to, you know, you do this, and I'm asking you to go on the offensive here. He's teaching him something. He's implying something to him, yeah? yeah. Then the story carries on. And this is where, come, where I find the third level helps us. And then he said, take the arrows. And the king took them. Elisha told him, strike the ground. So he struck it three times and stopped. <laughs> the man of God was angry with him and said, you should have struck the ground five or six times. Then you would have defeated Ar- uh, Aram and completely destroyed it. But now you'll defeat it only Three times. Now, I look at that story and think that's so symbolic, you know, with leaders and everything. God gives us the word of God. God gives us leaders. God gives us his spirit. But it's a partnership. You know, we have these opportunities, Jehoash did, but sometimes we're apathetic. The question is, why? Why is that? Now, you could come to church and I could say to you, okay, the reason is, Jehoash was probably thinking this. And you get, my perspective. You see a cylinder. Yes? But they had this, 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 now there's various ways of doing this, but one of them is they would do this. They would allow people to participate in the discussion. And the way they would do this is, uh, and I'm going to try and teach them, it's a little bit complicated, but they would essentially ask them to write a story. This is one of the ways they would do it. Write a story. So what might happen, we do this on pays, so we take a passage of scripture, and every full time, so it's easy for us. Monday, we look at the passage and do the Peshat. Tuesday, we think about the Remez. Wednesday, we look at uh, the, the search, the scripture, and look at uh, Drash. So what happens is there's a group of guys, I would say, okay, uh, what you've got to do is you've got to look at the bit where he picks up the arrows and he strikes the ground, and in your words, write that as a story and fill in the gaps. Because the Bible doesn't tell us why he did that. Now, you all probably have an idea why. Because you're thinking, well, knowing people and knowing God, he probably did it because of this. But when you, when you do it a certain way, when you write the story, you fill in the gaps, you don't change the facts, but you add... So it might be, somebody might say, well, Joash picked up the uh, arrows and thought to himself, this is pointless, I'll do it quickly to get this thing out of the way and then I'll find out what the real answer is. What normally happens is this, is you'll get five or six, seven or eight different stories. Okay. Now, the fact is, we're not committing heresy here, because we're not changing the fact. All we're saying is, knowing God and knowing people, maybe it was because of this. And what we're actually, through a community, is we're seeing different angles of the same story. And we're getting a fuller picture, because suddenly, Gail, when she has time, I'll put her on the spot, sorry. But when Gail has time, she shares something, I think, you know, I never thought about that, but sometimes I do that, you know? Now, what's interesting, it's almost, I'm going to use this stupid word, magical, It's, it's like special about this is that when you get these, whatever people's got on their paper is normally this. I say to them, you know, whatever's on your paper is a possible reason why maybe Jehoash did what he did. But it's a probable reason why you would have. And you can do about all manner of different things. Why did Peter step out of the boat? It doesn't really say why he, what was in his heart, what was in his mind. And you'll find the, the, the New Testament writers do this. There are certain times when you look in the New Testament and they're drashing a scripture. They're telling you why somebody did something, but it's not in scripture. And they're giving their perspective on it. And what it does is it helps us understand. It's, it's, again, it's one of those difficult things because I'd like to do it with you. It's one of those things where we begin to understand something about our relationship with God. So the Bible isn't simply telling us what... I, I don't believe this is a handbook to life. I know we say that. I think God could have done a better job if he simply wanted to write a handbook to life. This is the story of our relationship with him. 